Hello friends, happy Tuesday. Hope your day is going great. Um, yeah, so today I'm actually going to be uh, starting an Advent uh, reading for you guys. And if you don't know what that is, it's just, um, just a way for us Christians, followers of Christ, to really align our hearts and our mind um, to what, uh, what we celebrate in Christmas, which, which is the birth of Christ. So going through some readings, uh, I know my sister's going through the book, the book of Luke. Um, the book of Luke, I think, has 24 chapters. So they started reading chapter 1 today, December 1st, um, all the way until obviously December 24th. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Um, but I decided to do an actual Advent reading as far as like a devotional type um, thing this year. And actually, we did that last year as well. <laughs> um, but I was contemplating between uh, two specific ones um, that people had recommended um, to me. And um, just kind of going through it, I'm gonna let you guys know why I chose the one that I'm doing today. Uh, but the, there's a total of three that I would recommend and two that we were just kind of on the fence um, about reading and doing. Uh, but the first one is actually by a, let's see, a pastor that we follow and we like. His name is um, Paul David Tripp. And his advent is called, I have it right here, it's called Come Let Us Adore Him, a daily advent devotional. So that is one that I would recommend if you're thinking of doing one. And the other one is actually by John Piper, which my husband and I love. Um, he's had a very heavy influence in our lives. And um, we were thinking about that one. Um, and we were between that one and one from A.W. Tozer uh, that is called... It's called From Heaven, like I said, A.W. Toaster. So it is a 28-day Advent devotional. So we were stuck between John Piper's um, dev uh, devotional, Advent devotional, and this one. Um, and even though uh, John Piper has been amazing, we love him, um, I feel like I know a lot about his preachings and his style. And even though we do love it, I don't know much about A.W. Tozer. So that's why we were leaning more towards, hey, let's try, you know, reading this one and seeing what he's all about. I haven't read any of his stuff. I know he um, is a solid follower of Christ. And um, so, yeah, so I'm just like, let's do it. So that's the one that we chose. And that's the one that I'm going to be reading with you guys. Um, I'm going to be doing my best to be doing these I'm gonna try daily. I don't know about the weekends. Um, I'll let you guys do your own Advent readings in the weekends, but um, any Bible study that I do decide to do here in the month of December is going to be um, this Advent uh, devotional, okay? So you can buy this book, obviously, physically. You can buy it on Amazon. I think on Amazon, it was cheap. It was like less than 10 bucks. But I, we decided to get ours through iBooks. Um, and I believe it was like $7. So let me go ahead and jump right into it. Um, week one, day one, and it is called The Lost Presence. And I'm reading this with you guys um, right now. We're actually gonna be starting this, uh, reading this devotional with our kids tonight. So we're gonna be doing it right before going to bed. Okay, all right, so day one, The Lost Presence. So Genesis 3, 8, it says, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God. Uh, there's two more passages here. Genesis 3, 23, it says, The Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden. And then John 1, 14 says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Okay. Adam had lost the presence of the Creator God, and in the Bible record of the ages that followed, God never dwelt with men again in quite the same way. So when Adam and Eve sinned, obviously they were they left the Garden of Eden, and you know in the Garden of Eden it says that they walked with God, okay? So again, they lost that, right? And never again did we see that God really walked with someone the way that He did Adam and Eve. To the Israelites, God dwelt in the Shekinah, hidden in the fire and the cloud. Occasionally, he would appear in what theologians call a theo theophany, an appearance of deity. God uh, might speak briefly with a man, as he did with Abraham in the tent door, or with Gideon in the threshing floor. God did not linger. His appearance always cautious and veiled. So not like the way, again, that he did with Adam and Eve, because we see in Genesis that he walked, that God walked with man. And every time that he made appearance with the Israelites or with um, Abraham or with Moses, it was just kind of just brief, 
okay? And again, he was veiled or they couldn't really see him face to face. Even when God showed himself to Moses, it was in the fire of a burning bush or while Moses was hidden in the cleft of the rock. The eyes of fallen, sinful men were no longer able to endure the radiant majesty and glory of deity. Then, in the fullness of time, he came again to men, for in the word, sorry, for, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. They called his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. In that first coming of Jesus Christ, God again came to dwell with men in person. So we see a lot in the Old Testament, right? Again, how he revealed himself to Abraham, how he re revealed himself to Moses. But when Christ came, that right there was a way that God had dwelt with us, okay? I will have you know that I am not a prepositional preacher, but at this point, we must note three pre prepositions having to do with the coming of Jesus, God appearing as man. He appeared to dwell with man. He appeared to be united to man. He came to ultimately dwell in man forever. So it is with men or to men or in men that he came to dwell. I always note with a little chuckle that frustrations of the translators when they come to such passages as John 1.18, no man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. God's word is just too big for the translators. They come to this phrase in the, in the Greek, um, the Son hath declared him. In the English of the King James Version, it is declared. In other versions, they skirt it, they go around it, they plunge through it. They use two or three words and then they come back to one. They do everything to try to say what the Holy Ghost said, but they had to give up. Our English just will not say it at all. When we have used up our words and synonyms, we still have not, not said all that God revealed when He said, Nobody has ever seen God. But when Jesus Christ came, he showed us what God is like. So even just describing it in our English um, language and the words choice, etc., nothing could really even compare to what that phrase really means. Okay? I suppose that our simple and everyday language is as good as any. He has revealed him. He has shown us what God is. He has declared him. He has set him forth. He has revealed him. In these ways, the translators shift their language trying to get at this wondrous miracle of meaning. But that man, sorry, but that man walking in Galilee was God acting like God. It was God. Limitedly, sorry, limited deliberately having crossed the wide mysterious gulf between God and not God. God and creation. No man had seen God at any time. All right, John 1 18, like we said, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. Will you note that was is, well, is not the tense? Neither does it say that the Son will be in the Father's bosom. He is in the Father's bosom. It is stated in present, perpetual tense, the continuous, continuous tense. It is the language of continuation. Therefore, when Jesus hung on the cross, he did not leave the bosom of the Father. No. You ask me then, Mr. Tozer, if that is true, why did our Lord Jesus cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Was he frightened? Was he mistaken? Never, never. The answer should be very plain to us who love him and serve him. Wow, that was kind of deep. I feel like I'm going to reread it and unpack it. Um, hopefully you got even just the message that he's trying to say is that even our language can really fully explain the fact that God himself, who walked with Adam, didn't do it in the Old Testament the way that he did with Adam. Now with Christ, he has. And we see even in scripture, it says that he is the image of the invisible God. And we could just meditate on those words for such a long time and really let it penetrate into our hearts, into our minds. And I challenge you today to chew on that, you know, to think about, wow, this Jesus that we are celebrating his birth in this month, 
that it he is God himself. Okay? All right, guys. So hopefully tomorrow we'll be doing day two or whenever I, you know, I hop into this uh, um this video again, I'll continue on, but hopefully tomorrow I'll do day two, which is bridging the gulf. All right, that's about it, guys. Stay tuned for a few messages from myself. I will put the name of all three Advent devotionals that I am recommending to you guys down below for you guys to check out and the one that we are doing here now for this month. All right, love you all and I'll see you on my next video. Bye. Hey friends, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos. It really does mean the world to me that you take time out of your busy schedule to check me out. So thank you so much. I have a few messages to share with you guys. They won't take long at all, I promise. So number one, I accept prayer requests. Um, there's a list that we have here uh, at my house that me and my family pray for every single day. So if you have a prayer request um, and you want us to add you to the list, just go ahead and contact me. Uh, you can leave a comment below or you can email me or contact me through any of my social media platforms and we will go ahead and add you to that list. Number two, if you are on Instagram or Facebook, you should totally be following me. Why? Because I post a lot more content there than I do here. I share with you guys just my everyday life, pictures of my kids, recipes, what I do um, on the Insta stories and all that good stuff. So if you are there, go ahead and follow me. And number three, if you are not already part of this family, go ahead and subscribe um, to my channel and hit that notification bell so that every time I upload a new video, you get notified. We have so much fun here. I post videos on my life. I do vlogs. I do makeup reviews. I do recipes. And also I do Bible studies. So if you're interested, go ahead and join our family. We would love to have you. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so that's about it. That was nice, short, and sweet for you guys. Thank you again for watching. Um, don't forget our hope in life and death is in Christ Jesus. Love you all, and I will see you on my next video, Lord willing. Bye.